today we are talking clays, more specifically, kaolin clay and bentonite clay. Kaolin clay is actually really similar to a lot of other kinds of clays, like the French clays and the Australian clays. It's a light, soft, fluffy clay, and when you mix it with water, you get a really lovely creamy paste that's similar to cake frosting. The other clay we're going to be looking at is bentonite clay, which is a really weird clay if you're familiar with how the smoother clays behave. Bentonite clay is quite heavy and it's quite sandy, and it's crazy absorbent, especially when compared to something like Kaolin. It's also got a fairly high pH of around 9, which means it can be irritating on more sensitive skin, unless you mix it with something acidic, like apple cider vinegar, to bring its pH down. But enough of me talking, let's go take a look. All right, so here are our two clays. This one here, this is bentonite, so you can see that it's a gray clay and that it's quite fine compared to kaolin, which is quite white and a little bit clumpy. Let's take a look at how much one teaspoon of kaolin clay weighs versus how much one teaspoon of bentonite clay weighs. Make sure you level off your teaspoon. I find that because Callan's kind of clumpy, doing a little chop-chop motion with your knife before you level it off helps break up any clumps and get a better measurement. So there we go. One teaspoon of Callan clay weighs 1.42 grams, approximately. I'm sure if we were to do this experiment 10 more times, we would get 10 slightly different, but ultimately fairly similar numbers. Sure you tear your scale again. And now for the bentonite clay. So with bentonite clay, you've probably heard that you shouldn't let it come into contact with metal. From my reading, that's only applicable when the clay has been wetted because that's when the charge that metal, can, uh, metal is supposed to be able to interfere with. So one teaspoon here, level that off. 4.78 grams. So, as you can see, that weighs significantly more than a teaspoon of kaolin clay. Each of these dishes contains five grams or five milliliters of water, also known as one teaspoon. And so we're going to see how many teaspoons of each clay it takes to turn this amount of water into a thick, creamy mask. So I'm gonna start with the white kaolin clay and we're going to be using a half teaspoon measure for the additions. So as you can see, that's basically just completely disappearing into the water and doesn't seem to have affected its viscosity at all. So now we have one teaspoon of clay in one teaspoon of water. And again, still very, very thin. Now one and a half teaspoons of clay in one teaspoon of water. Still no real noticeable change. There's two teaspoons of clay in one teaspoon of water. Mm -mm. There's three. All right, now we're actually starting to see a little bit of a little bit of thickening here. You can see some bubbles forming as it gets thick enough to actually support a little bit of gas in there. So that's three and a half and four. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Step it back down to half teaspoon additions. So there's four and a half. And we'll go for five. Thank you. 
and I think I'll add one more, but that should be, that should be it. Okay, yeah, you can see that this last half teaspoon's getting, just incorporating a little bit more slowly than the others, and there we go. Now we have a lovely, nice, thick, creamy paste. So let's see how long and how much clay it takes us to get to that point with the bentonite clay. So with the bentonite clay, I'm going to use a dash, which is in this particular set of measuring spoons equivalent to one eighth of a teaspoon. And I'll be whisking it in with a wooden chopstick instead of a metal whisk so that we don't interfere with that charge. Okay, so there's one eighth. And so you can already see it's it's quite different. It's starting to sort of raft up and clump compared to the Callan clay. You can see it's, it's lumping up on the end of our chopstick here. And we've got clods of it in the water. And it doesn't really seem all that interested in dispersing, unlike the Callan clay, which really just sort of floated down to the bottom of the dish and was perfectly happy to be there. So yeah, right away you can see that bentonite clay is one odd duck. I'm gonna go for two eighths, so now this is one quarter of a teaspoon. And I'd say that's it. Yep, that's even actually a little bit thicker than the, uh, than the Callan one. So that was one quarter of a teaspoon compared to five and a half teaspoons to turn one teaspoon of water or five grams, five milliliters of water into a solid paste. So when we touch them, here's the Callan and you can see it's lovely and quite thick, really creamy, sort of easily coats my fingers into this lovely silky opaque sort of paste. Now if we check out the bentonite clay, so it's quite cloddy. It's definitely stiffer than the Callan, but that's because our sort of absorbency ratios weren't quite equal. But it's quite cloddy. You can see that there's still quite a quite a lot of lumps in here. You can see it goes on sort of like a like a gel. Like it's definitely smooth and slippery, but it doesn't want to spread out like the Callan does. It tends to clump together or I can spread it out into a smooth sort of gel-like coating. Again, really, really, really different. All right, now you know, Callan clay and bentonite clay are super different. Bentonite clay is much heavier and much more absorbent than Callan clay and all of the other light fluffy clays like the French clays and most of the Australian clays. So when a recipe calls for something like Callan clay or French green clay, bentonite clay is generally not a good alternative, especially if the recipe involves water. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.